Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. We're here with a guest today, Paul Clarici, the author of Boston Marathon History by the Mile and a lot of other interesting things. So this is a cool new book that's just coming out. There's an article about Paul in the Hopkinton Independent this week on, on page two, so you get a little bit of history of, of what this is all about. But welcome, welcome. Oh, thank you. Good morning. Hopkinton. Good yeah, morning. Absolutely. So, yeah. You've gotten to spend some brief pockets of time in Hopkinton. Yeah, I love Hopkinton. <laughs> I, love, I love running races here and just, it's a great place. So, uh, Marathon, before, yeah. before we forget, can you like tip up oh. the kip up? Right. He's rocking. I, I, I don't know Boston. if you can see it. It's a Tell Boston us about the shoe. and yeah, the Boston shoe. Hair. It's cool. Yeah, this is uh, back in 2013. Saucony had an event in Boston uh, a couple of days before the marathon. And they, because um, I was one of the guests there, so they gave me a pair of these shoes. And I love them. They're running shoes. They look great. They do look great. Like awesome. I don't get lost in the lost rain. Exactly. When I get awesome. dark out. I can use this as a beacon. There you go. <laughs> you know, it says Boston on it, so I love it. And yeah. this is appropriate, obviously, because you are a marathon runner and have run yes. many times. Tell us about that. Yes, I've run Boston 23 times from 23 uh, times. Yeah, 1990 to 2012. Wow. Knees held 23 up. 23 times. <laughs> So tell us what yeah. got you interested in running the marathon the first time. Um, well, I, was, I ran in high school, Walpole High School, mm -hmm. and uh, became the sports editor of the uh, newspaper. Mm -hmm. And one of the stories I would do every year would be talking to Walpole runners who ran the marathon. Okay. And they just enthused about it. They just loved the whole thing, staying in Hopkinton, getting to the village, running the whole course. They just, I just loved the whole thing. And I did little distances at that point, but then I kind of grew to a point where, you know, when the opportunity came, I said, oh, I'll do it once. <laughs> so the first year you ran it was what? Year? 1990. 1990. 1990. Mm -hmm. So in the, um, I can do the math, um, 25 years? 26 uh, years. I did. No, no, but I'm just that, saying yeah, since years then, ago. Um, how's it changed? Oh, when I ran in 1990, actually, there wasn't that, wasn't that many fencing uh, along the road, one thing. So the, people, spectators could actually could creep right. in. Yeah, and Wellesley in College. Way, right? <laughs> yeah, well, in Wellesley College, it was great because they always called it the scream tunnel. Scream tunnel. Oh, yeah. Because they were actually on both sides of the runners. Mm -hmm. There was yeah. no fencing. So when you ran through, you could you'd hear, hear it on both sides, which was wow. great. Yeah, that was, that was one of the biggest things. I think for the 100th, they started really getting some more fencing right. and things like that. But uh, yeah. that's one of the biggest things and uh, just the amount of people. When I first ran in 1990, I think there were, I don't know if there was 10,000 runners. Wow. I don't think. And what about yeah. fans? Still a lot of fans. Oh, there, that's, that has not changed. Yeah, that has okay. not changed. That has yeah. not changed. The 23 years I ran it actually included all the different time changes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was one start at noon when I started, and yeah. now there's, I think, nine different starts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's all complicated. The <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Loved, I loved the noon start and growing up near oh, the starting the line. It was perfect. You know, um, it meant that my family was able to go to Lexington for the battle, the reenactment right. at 8 and in then the you morning. Could come yeah. back. And then we'd be then back. You make it right. We'd be back in Ashland and at, in the back parking lot of St. Cecilia's in time for the runners. Yeah. Right, right. And stuff, and yeah. you know, there was no roads closed and things like that. Well, they moved the time up because right. they found so many runners that were doing the charity runs were finishing after it was dark. Yeah, yeah. it was and a lot about heat. TV and, and media and, 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 and the heat oh, and the heat. Started noon. It's already hot. Yep. And of course, you know. back in the early days, I mean, we've been following it for 18 years living here was anybody could run. I mean, once you had the numbered runners, the elite runners. And oh, all they had, the, you had the, oh, the bandits in the back. Bandits, yeah. The well, bandits. Yeah, the bandits yeah. really were never, ever encouraged, though, I don't think. Not encouraged, no. but it no. was certainly good entertainment did. with the costumes and all of the different, I mean, and the runners do some of that. Even the legit yeah. runners do some of that. Yeah. But well, the Groucho Marx, I remember. Oh, yeah. He was always like the last run. He dressed up as Groucho Marx. And there were clowns. Yeah. And, you know. Someone dressed as Santa Claus every year. Yeah. One of my first years in town, I've been in town as long as Patricia's been, about 18 years, I remember this guy who was a bandit, and he had on, clearly handmade, uh, like a suit of armor made out of pennies. God. I'm thinking the weight, 
He didn't run far. <laughs> I, I think he ran the entire. <laughs> I had seen him That's during like, the course. Oh, so, okay. so, so this is what. So tell yeah. us, what are some yeah. of the interesting things, things you've seen? Do you remember the streaker? Yeah. Talk about. I do remember that. Oh. You know, talk. I mean, yeah, let's talk about some your experience. Marathon lore. Well, I do remember being beat by a hamburger. You're uh, beaten by right. a hamburger. So bur a burger restaurants had oh. dressed up this big uh, like hamburger, and two people next to them dressed up as French fries. Mm -hmm. And oh. they ran by me, and you could hear all the runners going, I gotta beat that hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> the hamburger. They were like the no hamburger. good runners that just right. happened to be, you know, advertising. Dressed in costume. In costume, and I'm going, right. I gotta catch that hamburger. I didn't, yeah. You don't see that many like, costumes anymore. The guys in rock Are they, Is that frowned upon? Or it used to be a lot more of a bike dog. Well, it depends. See, to me, the marathon is like three races, and, and some people don't like part of it. To me, if, if it, the uh, elite runners mm -hmm. that are going to go off and right. just win or the get the prize money, then you have in the middle, you have the age group runners who are fast and mm -hmm. they're going to win in their age groups, they're competing for their age groups, yeah. uh, team titles, things like that. And then the other one is people like me or charity runners, you know, mm -hmm. uh, amateur runners. And to me, the combination of the three, I think, really makes this a huge global international race and a nice homey community yeah. race. And it's a tough balance. Falmouth is the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's a huge race, but you nice to have these community touches. Uh, but some people who, like, if they're an elite runner, don't want a charity runner or a costume character. Okay. But, but to but me, it doesn't affect. Start so right. early that they never get affected. Well, by you it. don't even see them. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't affect. You, you can't tell me someone in, in a hamburger is going to make Meb Kofeski's win any less. Exactly. Right. 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 Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it's, I think they don't the see incorporation it of everything. It becomes an event. Yeah. It's thirty thousand runners. It's a great yeah. race for everybody. Mm -hmm. I think. You know. So you've run in other marathons in other mm -hmm. places, and so how, how does that differ from? Uh, the Boston Marathon for you? Uh, some are different. Uh, I've done in different countries too, and, and uh, you, it really nothing beats Boston. Remember, John and the Elder Kelly mm -hmm. always said, other than the Olympics, Boston is the, the wow. best one. Really? And I think it's more because of the community. Really? Um, yeah, one of the pictures that I, I have in the book is of the no stopping sign, you know, yes. DPW. I have one of those up my house. Do you? And there's yeah. a runner breaking the tape. Yeah. You don't need that. Yeah. You do not need that for a no stopping town DPW sign. But to do that, make that effort. Mm -hmm. You know, an out-of-state runner can look at that. Oh, that's neat. They're thinking of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. That little community touch, or the landscaping, the flowers, yeah. the signs in the in the businesses, uh, yeah. uh, playing the Rocky theme music on their driveway for two hours straight. <laughs> 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 that's Unbelievable. That doesn't yeah. happen yeah. in other places. No, I, I've run so marathons in, in major cities. Yeah. That New York isn't like that. Uh, well, it changes. New York is pretty close. Yeah. But it changed. The route changes year to year in New York. Uh, no, that's basically the same. But the the uh, so they have like some tough areas of bridges we they don't allow people. We don't have any. We don't have any areas that people aren't allowed. Now the train tracks are on the left sometimes, so mm. you just won't have people staying there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there are certain parts of, of some courses where there aren't spectators. You need your feet up there. You need that support, uh, and it's difficult. You know. So I know the book is mile by mile. So let's yeah. let's actually yeah. go town by town. So, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, well, it all starts here. It all starts here. <laughs> yes. So yes, what's what? Let's um. We've yeah. talked a little bit about Hopkinton, like it feels like a village and things like that. Yeah. The next town is Ashland. What, what, what do you have well, about Well, yeah. you know, go, yeah, yeah. Well, go down by town. You, know the, you yeah. know the route. Well, Ashland that started the first 27 years of the race right. was in mm -hmm. Ashland. Uh, the first two years was in Pleasant Street. Uh, yeah, it's down the yeah. street from my parents' house. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, they actually have a race there in October and in March. You can start on the Yeah, they thing. do a half there. Yeah, yeah half marathon. Mm -hmm. It's great history to see there. Um, the next start was on the High Street Bridge, which is over the commuter rail. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the third start in Ashland is actually on the current four kilometer mark of the course. So for the runners who run the marathon, it's down near the uh, entrance of the uh, state park. Mm -hmm. Yep, um, yep, right there. Senior center, I think, there, mm -hmm. community center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says four kilometer mark. That's actually the last of the starts in Ashland. Okay. So you can actually run over that. Mm -hmm. um, Hopkinton's had about half a dozen starts primarily, and then they've tweaked it here and there. Um, mm -hmm. Like from 65 to 85, Hayden Row was the start. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So wow. you start on which runners love. You start on the street, you run out for about 1,500 yards, take a right on the road. Turn. Yeah, so it's like a nice, nice turn right at the beginning yeah. of the race. You, like, you say you like that or don't like nah, that? Nah, you, yeah. you, you, okay. you want to just start and go right, run go straight. straight. Right. Uh, but Bobby Gibb, 50 years ago this year, 1966, mm -hmm. she was hiding in the corner in that area. Oh. So when she came on uh, Main Street, she, she jumped on the course. Um, 
she waited till there was enough runners went by that she would find her crowd. pace. Right. Yeah. You know, her pace would be. Yeah. Oh, she trained. She she'd do 20, 30, 40 miles at a time. Mm. And that was the big thing when she applied for the application in 64, 65. She got injured before she came, so she came here in 66. Uh, Will Cloney, the race director, said women aren't allowed to run. The uh, amateur athletic union, the AAU, which governs races, didn't allow it. But he said women can't run that distance. Yeah, yeah I, well, he that just was didn't Bobby awesome goes, way. I just ran 30 miles. So don't tell me Guess I can't what? run that distance. <laughs> I can run that distance. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, will you be at the event next week for her at the Hopping Country There's Club? a few events, yeah, that yeah, I like. Yeah, she's I'm a great person. That. She wrote one of the, one of the forwards. She oh, and cool, Dave McGilvery wrote awesome. the forwards. And she's, if you ever get a chance to talk to her. I'm going to meet her next week at the Country oh, Club. I'll terrific. go to that event. She's yeah, terrific, yeah. she's She is like so in tune to her. Like running is like this connection spiritually to you know the outdoors sure. and athleticism and as and an stuff. artist so and then she sees that cre it is her creativeness you see that in her sculptures mm -hmm. she sculpted the actual the, the, the first trophies for the 1984 women's olympic uh, marathon trials wow. the first oh, one wow. for the women the awards the first top three women got her trophy mm -hmm. joan benoit says she cherishes it because she won the trials wow. so she had yeah, she did those uh, awards yeah, wow. we back when. So yeah, she's a terrific person. Absolutely. Yeah. The Framingham's actually a mile pretty decent mile. stretch yeah. too when you get into there. Yeah, Framingham the roads widen out. The great story there is uh, 1907 mm. when you approach the tracks. I always remember this. 1907. Uh, you remember that? Uh, no, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me change the noun. The tracks. And this is in the book too. Yeah, I look pretty you know, good for 1907. Tell us the story. But so yeah. what's the story about um, the train tracks in 1907? The top five or six runners started here in a freight train closing in. And they looked and they could see it wasn't stopping because the tracks cut across the course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they sped up and then also the train cut behind them and everyone else had to wait. Oh my goodness. As a train and those top six people go, thank you. And they. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I always wow. think of that in the tracks. I did a race, I think it was up in Lynn. Um, it was an out and back and I went over train tracks and I thought of the story and I thought it was cute. And I turned around and I come back, approached the tracks and the train cut the course. And I'm sitting there going, Okay, I shouldn't have thought of it. It's yeah. <laughs> so weird. You want your bib number, you're ready to go, and a train's in front of you. You go, this isn't right. <laughs> this isn't right. That's funny. What's so your you favorite go? part of the course as a yeah. runner? Ah, oh, that's tough. But you, um, like, you get to the Hell. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe Boston College or after Heartbreak. Yeah, yeah I'm teasing. Okay, I'm teasing. Stuff. I know. Some people love the hill. BC mm. has a big crowd out there, don't they? Yeah, yeah. BC's good. Yeah. A, a, a friend of our, the family, Bill Squires, who coached the Greater Boston Track Run, right. okay. and he coached Bill Rogers, mm -hmm. Alberto Salazar, Greg Meyer, Bob Hall, the wheelchair yep. champion. He knows this course left and right. Uh, he ran it in 1961, and he came in 20th. Uh, as he approached wow. BC, this is 1961, he grabbed someone's cup and drank it in BC, and it was a seven and seven. Oh, ah! of course! Oh, <laughs> so the next mile, he's like, ah, trying to, you know, it's not really what the yeah. body wants. No. So no. He always said, be careful, look what's in it. Because back then, there's no water yeah. stations. My yeah. daughter went to Boston College and, you know, just, of course, memories of being there every yeah. year, cheering out there. The cheering. Oh, it is a great place. Growing up here, having been at the starting line yeah. forever. Yeah, no, BC is yeah. great. My mother spent over 20 years working there. She's a double eagle, so I, I just love that whole area. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, BC is beautiful. Thing. Uh, yeah, really nice. So, um, so you go Framingham, Natick, Wellesley. Wellesley. Um, and you yeah. mentioned like going well, past Wellesley like, uh, yeah. 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 and Newton, and the then Wealth Brighton. Um, um, yeah, going to Brighton, Brookline. Yeah. Um, they include the Brighton portion as Boston. Yeah. But in mm. the book, I sort of separate just to let people know because out-of-staters don't know it's, it's a neighborhood yeah. of Boston. Yeah, yeah. And, Bri and Brighton right. is a yeah. different culture too. I mean, it's. Yeah. Yep. It, it, you know, you get a whole bunch of Irish people out there, Jerry. Yeah. Uh, it's changing now. I'm There's so much Irish, development so. <laughs> yeah. going on in Brighton. Just like that. Yeah. I'm afraid that the, the Irish the, culture is um, going to change. Yeah. yeah, well, Brighton is good. I mean, it's a nice little area. It's right after um, Gasson Hall and BC is the top of Harvard mm -hmm. Hill. Mm -hmm. So once you finish there, <laughs> and they know it, the BC students and the people know you, they need help there. Mm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. once you finish, and then you go down Tough Hill to Lake Street at uh, Brighton, right, okay. and then there's a tough mile. There's a cemetery in the right, and there's uh, the trolley tracks on the left. So it's, okay. it's it can be kind of a tough area mm. if you're in trouble or if you're hurting. 
-hmm. And then you go down Chestnut Hill Ave and then bank left onto Beacon Street into Brookline. Mm -hmm. And there's a great story with Patty Dillon. Um, she's in Connecticut now. She grew up in Quincy as Patty Lyons or Patty Catalano. Mm. And she came in second place in 1979 and 1980. Wow. Mm -hmm. So 1981, she was geared up. She's ready to go, a local favorite. She's coming down Chestnut Hill Ave. Again, back then, the crowd control, there wasn't that much, no yeah. fencing. Mm -hmm. They had some police on horses, that kind of thing. Yeah. So she's coming down and she's, she's taking the tight turn onto Beacon Street and there's a police horse there and she's flying and behind her is, is Allison Rowe from New Zealand. Yep. Catching up, so Patty's in good, good uh, location. And all of a sudden the horse sort of fidgets and takes a step <gasps> into the race and bang. Oh, Pat, no. Patty smacks right into the hind oh. quarter of the horse. Oh, oh. no! no. no. Oh. Yeah, she falls back, but runners sort of catch her before she falls. Yeah. And uh, Allison Rowe just kind of like goes around and keeps going. Shit. Ends up winning, and Patty came in second for the oh. third year oh. in a row. Yeah. What a story. Is that in this book, too? Yeah, yes. She, oh, wow. I asked her about that. I said, I have Actually, to ask people you, see this. what did you think? Yeah, she goes, I saw stars. I saw stars. Oh, I bet she know, did. The horse is probably like, what was that? Yeah, but, you know, two tons of animal. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. She imagines you know, just like boom, oh. hitting this horse. This oh, yeah. That's well, and, what you'd and as yeah. when you're running and you're that far into the race, you're so tunnel oh, yeah. vision and methodical, oh. and you don't have that. You're not looking peripherally about you're what in some kind of zone. You're just trying to get one. Yeah, you get like three miles yeah. to go, I think, around there, uh, oh just my under goodness. four. You're yeah, looking, just thinking finish line. So, what sure. about your experiences running? How, you know, compare some of the races, you had different weather, you know, if you ran it for 23 years, you've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that, that's, that 2012 was the real, real heat. The heat wave? Oh, yeah. I had yeah. friends stay with me um, out of towners. I had two runners, and one was um, just 18, and the other one was um, kind of my age and more experienced, but still, they finished. Yeah. But they're like, it was not a good time, no. but it was... Right. Incredible heat. Well, the BAA knew ahead of time because some mm -hmm. races the heat can kind of catch up. Like they'll say it's cool in Hopkinton. As you get closer, it'll get warmer, so you can kind of prepare. Yeah. They knew a few days out it's going to be, be heat wave. 90s, 80s, depending on how fast you're going. Yeah. Be in the course. If you want to defer, mm -hmm. all the official runners who want to defer, you can to the next year. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'll run it. My cousin deferred. I'm making so fun you ran of him. It? So I ran it, and I remember going through Wellesley, and there was a bank that has a time temperature on it, and it said 91 degrees. Uh -huh. You're like, no. I'm like, yeah. you really, I had to know that. Right. Yeah, it's like, just I just don't want I to know. <laughs> well, it was tough. Those people actually just drop it because it was just so, so heating hot. Costume. So you finished? It's dangerous. Yeah, it took like seven hours. I did. I really paced myself, really. Something like that, you can't. You can't. A lot of runners go well and go well. Once I start to feel bad, I'll slow down. It's too, it's late. too late. It's too late. Yeah. You got to do that preventative. So yeah. I, I walked a little. It was weird walking portions in Ashland and early towns, mm -hmm. but I knew I'd need it. And I right. finished healthy. I finished strong. Good. I finished good. That's good. But it was just like, yeah, Amazing. That, that was a tough. It's a head and, race as well as a And I told race. my cousin later that night because he deferred. I go, yeah, you were the smart one. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah was, I should have. Yeah. What yeah, about what tough. about on the other extreme when it's been bitter? I know there was one year where Last they almost canceled yeah, because yeah. it was rainy supposed times. to have snow. Yeah. I, was, I, I ran that one. That was almost canceled that week it was a norisa that came yep. in, real bad rain mm -hmm. and i remember in i was in hopkinton common and i remember the water going down the curb and the water was as high as the curb yeah and i, and I have like a rain jacket rain pants i had bags on my like Shoe uh, shoes yeah. on my head on my hands because you're in hopkinton for a while you stay yeah. in the corral right so you just you before you even started you were a mess yeah, yeah. and yeah. i had somebody at about 16 mile mark and he he and his son were cheering me on every year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, do you want me, I'll have something for you if you want to change into it. I said, well, what do you think? He goes, well, give me one of everything in case you have to change into everything. So I gave him one of everything, the shoes, socks, pants, shirt, mm -hmm. hat, had everything. And I was soaked by the time I got to 16. So were you happy to change so into I everything? Changed, yeah. I changed into, I had, uh, I'm in the middle of like 135 before, 128, 95. Yeah. All I had on was my shorts, my running shorts. <laughs> and I put on everything, a whole new, it took me like 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. but worth I was it a, though. Last 10 miles, I was yeah. like the driest runner, I bet. Right. Probably and that whole worth course, it. Worth it. Oh, wow. it was worth it. I'm like, ah, So when you're so in the, the corrals in Hawkington and yeah. you guys are more bundled up, it's still chilly. And Hawkington is probably the old, is the community that affects by this. It's like, all the clothes that come flying yes. off and oh, things yeah. like that. Now they're picked up and given to a charity, but for years they just, 
and so do you like pick like all right i never want this shirt again i yeah. don't want this yeah, <laughs> yeah they do say right stuff. like like you'll get like a torn everyone looks horrible yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't worry your best does because oh, right? they're all like torn shirts yeah. or garbage bags you see and they like this the walking dead movie they're all uh, <laughs> you know they're all like just looking like that and they will they'll throw it or discard it within the first mile yeah, yeah. And they but clean uh, it and, and, and uh, yeah charity yeah now picks which is it nice all up. right the, the volunteers pick it up and then within half an hour of the race over mm -hmm. this yeah. charity truck comes and starts oh, picking up so, so they're bagged in clear bags now and stuff like that that was something that impressed yeah. me when i moved to town and went to my first right. start i was absolutely impressed that you saw all this disrobe and stuff thrown at the sides and all the within people. a half hour yeah, of, yeah. This, of the last runner crossing the start you would know what happened. Up. It was like <laughs> no, if you had run terrific, home yeah. and said the aliens had invaded and, and got everybody to come back, they'd be you like, "You come back, like, what? What are you yeah. talking about?" Exactly. <laughs> Hawkinson's great like that. I know. Maybe like, a couple hey. of barrels, maybe some fencing, but I'll tell you, right within an hour, you just like. Especially. Well, by the time the race was gone, we could go over to like the high school, or, yeah. or, you know, yeah. in the village, really? and they're already pulling out the porta potties. And, and it's like, really? like the tents already oh, by three o'clock in the afternoon. The tents Everything's already gone. Back. Everything yeah. down at like the village is like, gone. Nothing happened. Nothing. Like, like, yeah. like, you know, you would not know. I, I always do the estimate that there's thirty thousand runners, and and that there's probably two to three people per runner cheering them on right. at the start. Yeah. So I figured there's about 100,000 people that descend upon the town oh, yeah. at that moment mm -hmm. at the start, and poof. Yeah, yeah that, it's on the front end. So everyone's here for four, yeah. five, six hours right. before the race. Yep. Yeah. The race starts, there's nine starts. I think 11.30 is the last yep. wave. Then everyone's out, and all the other towns, they're on the other end. Yep. Five, six hours before the race, there's no one there. Yeah. yeah. They're just, just filling the water, getting the tables. Race starts now. They have yep. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah it, it is amazing. The, 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 the town whole does flow such. Of it. Oh, you were, the, Hopkins ra raised the bar on how to really clean up. Uh, so I have yeah. to nicely, ask yeah. you, and I don't want to be negative note. Maybe the story's in here, but uh, what about the the bombing year? The yeah, bombing 2013. Year, 2013. Yeah. Did you still think about that in the book, or what did yeah, you share? Yeah, I actually I was writing it with? around that time because I, I started writing this before that, and in the last chapter I, I include that. I call it memorial. Because there were two other individuals who died previous to that in the yeah. 90s. So I wanted to include everything. Um, I, I feature a little bit of, of the information. Uh, I talked to the Boston, uh, I think it's the public health, mm -hmm. uh, to get some real specifics. Because mm -hmm. by the time I wrote this, you could. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and they said that um, the three individuals who died there mm -hmm. died instantly. Then there was about 250, I have the exact number, 253 or so mm -hmm. um, people who were transported out. Yeah. And it was such a tremendous uh, response that it was a 100% success rate, wow. which is unheard of on any kind of tragedy. Mm -hmm. Everyone who was evacuated went to, I think, one of eight or nine hospitals, ICUs, mm -hmm. and all survived. And there were some close calls. Yeah. Well, so, we had the yeah. medical professionals there ready to assist runners. And so that was the silver lining. They, they were right All there and could there. do the triage, and and you know it, it was like, you, it was as if you know like the whole battlefield that you have a triage. Well, that event. was a perfect place. That was amazing. Uh, Had right. it happened any other part of the start, or any other part of the race, it really would because there were pockets of medical along the whole course. There's one in Hopkinton as well. But you village. didn't have that. Yeah, the largest one concentration with, with hospitals with surgeons in the tents. Oh my God. Uh, they volunteer and everything, and the I transport of wheelchairs going back and forth. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and then they had all, I think there was about, as I say, eight or nine hospitals. They were on alert very Amazing. quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the response, uh, just from that alone, then you have the people, St. Ignatius Church uh, at oh. BC. It's, mm -hmm. it's not BC's church, but right. it's, it's on the property oh. there. Mm -hmm. They opened their doors, and the Jesuits and the students came out. You know, about 400 runners who yep. were stranded there. Yes. There's about 56 total, mm -hmm. 5,600 total. And they brought like bagels and food and blankets, yeah. um, cell phone charges. So once the cell phones yeah. came back online, yeah. uh, translators for yeah. runners the from out of, uh, different Other countries. Country. Wow. Uh, you have the call, you're five miles from the finish where your family's going to get you. Yeah, wow. Right. And if you're trying to find state, each other. Oh, yeah. You are. Yeah. You have well, no we had clue. a couple yeah. local runners that were, one was near the finish line. Thanks one had just finished and yeah. one didn't get to finish. We had right, them on the show a couple oh, of years really? ago, right, right after it happened. And they're actually both very good friends of ours. Right. Yeah. And so hearing their different stories of, you know, crossing and then knowing exactly where right. my family, family would be and the other one who didn't cross right. and was only about a mile or so behind, right. where she got rooted, how, 
and then not being able to find our family and connecting and kind of the tough right and they're local. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. can't right imagine. Because when the first bomb went off, they stopped people going up Hereford, so the runners had to go down Com Ave. Mm -hmm. Actually, kind of in the old days, you'd go down in the 20s, 30s and stuff, you'd go down Com Ave, take a ride on Exeter and finish mm -hmm. in the old mm -hmm. days. Um, so they did that, and then when the second bomb, they go, okay, we're stopping it. So people were clogged near the Mass Ave Bridge, Kemal Square, BC, was the big areas yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. And it was the unknown. They found a third package, they closed I down the hotels, all these oh, things. No. But I'll tell you, Horrible. And people have asked me this. I'll say the the immediate support filled up. I think whatever vacuum, whatever hole in your chest that you felt from the, the explosion, the tragedy. Mm -hmm. Immediately, the support. Mm -hmm. I'm talking seconds. Whether it's professionals, volunteers, people on the street who watch on TV, and they come out and give blankets to people on on the course. I, that was stunning. Yeah. The Human immediate support. Oh my yeah. goodness. Mm -hmm. You well, didn't have a chance. The, the kindness and humanity oh, and right. stuff like that is immediate. Didn't even think. And right. I, you know, I know we're coming winding down on time and stuff too. A um, couple things. One is that this is not your first book, mm -hmm. and that you've written on the Falmouth race and been very involved in racing. I wanted to make sure people know that he's doing a book signing. Uh, exactly. Right. Good. And um, if you want to, it will be at the, at the card section of Hoppington Drug. Yeah, the day before the marathon. So that's on Sunday, April 17th at Hop Drugs from 11 to 1. He just wrote it down here. Just a it. signing there, and then at 2 o'clock down the road on Hayden Row, I'll be at the, at the uh, Hoppington, Hoppington National Historical, Historical Society okay. event. So they combine, Sunday, yeah, right before the marathon. At 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then the. Uh, where will you be on Marathon Day? Are you on the Com? I'm not too sure yet. Yeah, I, I was trying to go to different places. Not, yeah. Because for 23 years I was on the course, right. so I see all the neat spots <laughs> yeah. and different things. So it's always neat to see it from a different perspective, sure. in a different area. Yeah, sure. great. Wow. And, and, um, our friend Tim said to say hello from the 26th. Tim killed us. Oh, he's yeah. terrific. I've gone with him this morning so and stuff like events. that. But um, right. yeah. we really appreciate you driving up. This is a for must read. Oh, this I is a great book. Just leaping through it. So, you know, check it out. I appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. And, and um, a lot of fun thank you so much. We'll, we'll see you on Sunday, um, the 17th yeah. at um, yeah. Pop Drug. Yeah, Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for being with us, everyone. I'm Dr. Gerba Wolf. And I'm Dr. Nadine Tung. About one in eight women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. The good news is that death rates have been declining because of increased awareness and earlier detection. Early detection is critically important as it improves the chances that the cancer can be treated successfully with more treatment options that can result in better outcomes. Current recommendations are that women in the 20s and 30s without symptoms should have a clinical breast exam every three years. The risk of breast cancer increases with age, however, and women should consider screening tests beginning at age 40. Women can also reduce the risk of breast cancer by eating a healthy diet, getting regular exercise, and drinking fewer alcoholic beverages. For more information on preventive measures and screening, visit the American Cancer Society at cancer.org.